Hello and welcome to ConsoleTraining.com. My name is Alex Hughes and today we'll be creating and using macros in Grandamade 2. Let's begin. So let's begin. We're using one of our basic tutorial show files because it suits our purpose fairly well. Uh, we have some Mac 700s, just four of them. We have some 101s, some Mac 101s, once again four of them. And then we have some lead pars which are actually being put in as lead bars in this one. We'll only be using them probably for about one or two of the macros, but they're still there and suit the purpose. So macros on the Grand MA2 are a fantastic feature and they can save a lot of time, but they can also get you tangled. I always try to create macros that I only need and I need only on certain things. So if I find myself doing something more than three or four times, I'll normally sit down and create a macro, especially if it's something that I'm doing across a lot of shows. Most of my macros and most people's macros are born out of necessity rather than just doing cool things like moving things around the screen. One of my favorite ones is a save to both drives one and we'll have a look at that now. And what that does is it selects the first drive, which is your internal drives, saves the show there. Then it selects one of the external drives and saves the show there. The second external drive and saves the show there, and then it sets it back to the internal drive. Now, if you've only got one USB, this is kind of redundant because by default, when you save to an external drive, it also saves to the, the uh, internal anyway. But this is really handy if you've got two drives and you can do what I've done here, which is stick it on one of my view buttons down the bottom. And then I can run that and I can quickly see that it goes through and saves the show file for me. Uh, one of the, my favorite preset ones that comes with the desk, the generic ones, is if you, is just a stomp all running effects. So if you've got some moving lights and you've got dimmer sign, bit of a tilt running, and you know some red blue stuff, I can click on stomp running effects and it stomps them all, which is fantastic for programming. Now, equally, what I could do is I could be running my effects. I could go and I can click stomp effect here, but it's a lot better, I reckon, to have a stomp running effects button. And here we can see it clears the selection and then just runs a stomp preset type through. My next one is a one I created that now appears in the show file. And I'm just going to quickly change my A and B faders to program and executive time so you can see what you can do. Especially when I go between a program show and a busking show, the toggle times one is really good. And all that does is it toggles the two special masters. So we can see that they're on currently. And all it does is turn them on and off. Really simple, but really fantastic if you don't want to dig through things. You can also tag that on to other macros. So in a macro line, you can have one that says go macro 4 to turn that on and off. Intensity Kill is one of the ones that I used on a touring show where I had stuff that we had pre-programmed and then I had busking stuff. And all mine was set to do was turn off certain executors, turn off all the effects, turn off some other uh, executors with a fade time, so they, they would have been my intensities, and then turn off some color, uh, color sequences as well. This is a really nice one to have and what we could do is we could also tag on the, the toggle times one. So if I go, go macro four from memory, yes, it'll also toggle those times. So if I'm, if I'm doing what I'm doing, uh, let me, let me have a look. We'll grab, we'll put something on 1.6. So we've got just some intensity on 1.6. I'm going to modify it. I oh know it's already got what I need. So I can run this. So say that I'm going, I've got a show running and I'm doing a busking thing and this is my intensity. I can go intensity kill and it's going to turn it all off and it's going to fade it out for me. And you can see in the command line exactly what it's done. The easiest way I think of building macros is doing it in the command line manually and seeing how it works and going back. The next one is one that is off MA Share, and it is an absolutely wonderful uh, macro. 
Let me just delete a couple of these colors. I know what sequences I'm destroying here. This one generates colors for you. And it's a massive pain in the ass to write, but it's fantastic to have because it'll generate all your colors for you for RGB fixtures. So let me just delete my color presets, 4.1 through 50. Yes. And we'll have a look at it first. So it selects fixtures 1 through 5,000, selects and sets all the attributes. And I've when I got this one, this was an RGB one, I've added white to it because I deal with RGBW fixtures. If the fixture doesn't have a white parameter, then it just ignores it and will give you an error. And then all it does is just store the preset. So this one does the red, saves it as red. Then it does green, saves it as green, blue, and then it just goes on and on and on and on. And it's quite fast, and it's really good to get your basic colors in. So let's watch it run. So I click it, and my colors are done. So I can grab my 700s, go yellow, bring them to full, and I've got them in yellow, magenta, light blue. And obviously you can build your own colors in if you've got the values. And most of the time you're going to be coming back anyway and updating these colors anyway. But at least it gives you something to start with. And get up and running with the next one I've got what's called a effect generator so pretty much what it does is it just assigns groups labels it as two groups three groups four groups so I can set up a group let me check the numbers 22 so let me delete a couple of effects here you can obviously change the numbers but I normally keep these numbers free anyway So you can create an effect, let's say a dimmer sign effect. And if I copy that a couple of times, you could also obviously emulate this into the effect. When I run this group thing, it automatically labels them as two groups. So if I grab once again my 700s, You've got a two group version, three groups, four groups, five. And I can also do one that now does wings and blocks. And all it does is change those lines for you. It's a really handy one to have, I reckon. Especially when you're generating effects and you need to quickly just wing it out or, you know, just take one effect, build one effect. You really like it and you want to have it available in a couple of different options. Obviously, you can just import your own effects, but... You know, you can build it with that. The next one, all it does is just enable and disable uh, MSC, which is time code. Uh, the next one is a Matt Mills special, which is guest Artnet in and out. So if you've got a desk that is external to yours, such as someone has brought a hog console and everything's patched through, you know, an MPU or something, and you just want an easy way of taking a second desk, you can plug it in via Artnet. And what this disk does is it sets all your universes 1 through 100 at 0, and then it enables Artnet for you. So essentially, right now, we don't have control, we can't output, as you can see, but if we had a desk plugged in via Artnet, we could. And then this one just disables it. Really nice, really easy, simple way of doing it. The next one is once again from uh, Matt Mills. But there's there's been a couple of people that have got very similar ones. And it's just a park selection one. So I can grab some fixtures, stick them in a position, and go park selection. And clear that out. And that's done. That's parked. Which is a lot faster than going... You know, putting them in position, and then going, pause, park, please, clear. Just one button, do it really easily, which is nice. The other fun one that's really good for setting up a busking show, especially if you haven't created the busking show, is the zoom generator. So if we have a look at focus, let me just check the numbers that it uses. 6.1, yeah, I'll have to move those, stand by. 
the zoom generator sets the attribute of zoom at zero, stores preset one, six top one, labels it as narrow, then does medium, then does wide. So if I go 700s, zoom generator, it's going to do it. And now we have wide, medium, and narrow done. Now obviously that's not going to work on all fixtures, some of them will be backwards, but once again it's about giving you a quick, rapid starting point. I've already got my focus presets in so I can start programming my show. Other than that, the load predefined one has a lot of fantastic ones and you can play around. There's been lots of discussions in the MA group about, you know, different macros that you can run, really cool ones. I've seen ones that generate, um, generate layout views for you. There's one that, you know, will just mercilessly, mercilessly delete things for you. There's lots of fantastic macros and every version that they come out with, they seem to add more of these macros for you. These are cool ones. Temporary, temporary things using the menu key are awesome. So it brings up temporary command views on one of your screens without you having to store over the top of screens, which is kind of handy. But yeah, that's that's macros. I mean, obviously you can dive a lot more deeper into macros, but essentially anything you can do out of the command line, you can do with a macro. So, for example, we could have something that goes... Let, let's do it first in the command line so we can see exactly what we're doing. Rather than me doing it blind. So I want... Max 700s. At full. And then I want them at the audience. And then I want them... In the fire gobo with zoom wide. Which is programming, but we're going to put it into a macro. So we can see group 2 at preset 2.2, 3.4, and 6.3. So all I need to do is put that into a macro. So we go group 2, and every line has an uh, has a please command between it. At preset, and I can't remember what the preset was, so we'll look back. 2.2, 3.4. Preset 6.3. And we'll also put a wait time of 0 0.2 so we can see it as well happening. We'll clear out and we'll try running it. We'll see what happens. Now, the only thing I forgot to do was add at full. And another thing you can also do is you can test lines in macros if you don't want to run the full macro, which is nice if you're modifying stuff. So I'm going to quickly tack the at full command. Whoops. At full command in first so we can actually see it. We'll add 0 0.5. Let's actually make them a second. Why don't we do that? And then I can also test a line by going test line. But because it relies on the previous line, sometimes they don't work. But let's let's try running it. Let's clear it for a sec and we'll try running our macro. So there we go, it's in white, position, gobo, zoom. Anyway, thank you for watching creating and using macros. This is a basics video. If we've got enough interest, we will be 
delving a little bit deeper into the macros, maybe creating some more complicated ones. But this is a really good starting primer one. Thanks for watching.